Now they say the biggest mistake is not learning from your mistakes. But an even bigger mistake is not learning from someone else's mistakes. So today I'm going to go over the biggest mistakes that I made during my weightlifting journey so that you do not have to. So the first one is going to be bulking and cutting. So basically I was pretty skinny when I started out. I was 68 kilos and I really just wanted to get big. I just wanted to get as big as possible, as fast as possible. I just wanted to get it done in six months or a year and just I ate my ass off. I went to up to like 81 or 82 kilos within eight months and I got a little bit fat. I probably overshot a little bit. I ate too much food. I counted calories, but I didn't do it very well. Um, and so I overshot. And because of that, I went on a cut. And I cut down to maybe 78 kilos or something, or 77 kilos. So I went way up, and then I cut down. Now, I don't think you should be cutting at all if you're skinny for the first three, four, five years of your training. There's just no reason to cut. If you cut, it means it's a mistake. It means you bulked too hard before, and now you're correcting that mistake. So a better strategy is going to be bulking responsibly. So this means being in a small caloric surplus and steadily but slowly gaining weight. I would suggest about half a kilo to one kilo per month. And that is going to be enough to gain muscle at a fast rate without a lot of fat, which you'll have to cut out later. Now, if you're not skinny, if you're already a higher body fat percentage when you're starting, I would start with a cut, actually. I would get down to a lower body fat percentage, and then you can do a slow bulk later. Um, but if you're, you know, 25, 30, 35 percent body fat, you should not be bulking at all. You'll just get even fatter. And for me personally, this cycle went on for a few years. I would bulk into the winter, and then into the spring I would say, oh my god, my abs are not sharp. And so I would, you know, cut down into the summer. And I think if you do that too much, you're wasting time. Because when you're cutting, you're probably not gaining as much muscle as you could if you were bulking. Um, so you don't want to bulk too hard, but you don't want to cut too hard either. You just want to bulk as slowly and as long as possible. Number two would be my programming. So this refers to my overall short and long-term structure of my training. And really there was no structure. I didn't really have a, a short-term plan or a long-term plan. I would just go to the gym and I would lift weights. But there was no long-term goal. There was no short-term goal. There was really no goals at all, um, besides maybe just you know get stronger or get bigger. Um, but I didn't do like microcycles, mesocycles, macrocycles. I didn't really plan things out. I never followed a set plan. And I think this was to my detriment because I would start a plan, stop it. Start a new plan, stop it. Go to another plan, another plan. And I really didn't build momentum that is crucial for top results. Now, I don't want to make it seem like I got bad results. I actually got really good results. But that was not due to the plan. That was due to me working really, really hard and having above average genetics. My plan was no benefit to me. If I had combined those previous factors with an excellent plan, my results would have been even better. Going along with that, I was always terrified, absolutely terrified, of taking time off. Even a week, I just, I wouldn't do it. I wouldn't leave the gym. I would schedule my life around the gym. I wouldn't take vacations. It got to the point where it was very obsessive and I was really just, my life was dominated by the gym. And in reality, you can take time off. It's not that big a deal. In fact, studies have shown that if you take time off, even just, you know, three weeks in the middle of a training cycle, it won't really impact your long-term progress. All right, number three is gonna be volume, intensity, frequency, and RPE. So these are gonna be the building blocks of your training. This is gonna be how you manipulate your training to get optimal results. Now, I didn't even know these existed, to be perfectly honest. I just went in, I lifted weights, I wrote it down, but I didn't even think about, you know, how much volume am I doing? What is the intensity that I'm doing? Um, how close am I going to failure? It just, none of these concepts really even occurred to me because I didn't educate myself for several years, to be honest. And I think it, the earlier you learn about these, the better your results will be. Number four would be basing my training in science and being more analytical, especially about what matters. So when I say base your training in science, I don't necessarily mean 
there has to be a paper supporting it. But there should be a logical reason why you are doing everything you are doing. If you are doing bent over rows, you should be able to explain why you are doing it. If you cannot, then you should not be doing it. It's just that simple. If you cannot say why you are doing it, don't do it. So simple, so easy. Now, I'll be perfectly honest, the fitness industry, there are so many people who are completely full of crap. Whether it's diet, whether it's supplements, training, anything. There's gonna be a lot of people who are just completely full of crap. And mostly this is because money. Now, as a beginner, it is really, really difficult to choose who to trust. Now, you're probably already following my channel, which is a good start. But how do you choose other people and pick who to listen to? That is, that is very difficult. And honestly, at the start, I had no idea. And a lot of the websites that I read before and the people that I listened to before, I look back at that and now I am like horrified about the media that I consumed regarding fitness and the people that I listened to. Because a lot of it really led me down the wrong path, to be honest. Um, and this is particularly prevalent with steroid users. Um, a lot of their training they would describe and it sounded so good and they look so big and you have to realize that you cannot train the same way as them because your, re your results will not be the same, for sure. I would also really recommend being analytical, but not too much. So there's some people who are not analytical at all and they would benefit from being more analytical, from analyzing their training more, from tracking the data a little bit more, from keeping a training log, maybe a food log as well. And they will benefit from looking at the data more and paying attention to that side of things more than they are right now. Other people should do that less. Maybe they're tracking too much. They're tracking their sets, their reps, the weight, the time of day, how they felt, the temperature, if they broke up with their girlfriend, what TV show was on. At a certain point, like, it's too much. So you need to find out what you should track, what you should manage, which data is important and will actually impact your results. That data you should absolutely track. Everything else, throw it out. The last one is gonna be get a coach. Now I realize that I am a coach and this gives me inherent bias, but I really do think that I could have saved a lot of time had I just found someone who could point me in the right direction because I did waste a lot of time, a lot of effort, a lot of money doing things that weren't very effective and that someone with more experience than me, they could have just said, no, don't do that, do more of this, don't do this, do more of that. And I think just a guiding hand could have helped a lot. I'm not saying that you can't do it alone. Obviously, I have done it alone. Um, but just from a point of view of efficiency, it makes sense to get a good coach. Just find someone you connect with who understands you. Maybe it's me, maybe it's someone else, maybe it's someone you don't even pay. Maybe it's just a friend who can give you some feedback or something. But you really do want to have someone with more experience than you giving you some advice and putting you on the right path. Bodybuilding and fitness and all this stuff is very complex. There's no one road. There's no two roads. There's no right way and wrong way. There are so many factors that you're walking a hundred roads and maybe 50 of those are the right road, 50 of those are the wrong road. You would walk, you know, much faster if you're walking on the right path 100% of the time with all of the roads that you're walking. Um, and that's where someone, you know, me, I'm happy to help you, or anyone can optimize that percentage and get you walking on that right path faster and sooner. Now, all that being said, I have gotten pretty good results, even my first year, which shows that you don't have to have everything be perfect um, to get good results. It just helps get, you know, optimal results. Make sure to like and subscribe, and I will see you next time. Stay safe, everyone because of this corona fang.